this demonstration, we're going to look at configuring our endpoint protection policies. So we're going to create an anti-malware policy. We'll then deploy that out to a collection of computers. And we'll also as well create a new Windows Defender Firewall policy. And again, we'll just send that out to a bunch of computers. So in an earlier demo, what I did is I installed the endpoint protection point. We set up the basic policies for our device collection. So we have enabled it. The next thing we need to do is specify how it will actually work within our organization. So to do that, I've come into my System Center Configuration Manager Console, I've come to my Assets and Compliance Workspace, and what we're going to do is come to Endpoint Protection, expand up the triangle, and what we're going to do at this point here is we're going to create a new anti-malware policy. So we'll right-click, we'll create our anti-malware policy. Uh, what we'll do at this point here is we'll just call this one a Pilot Group. And then once we create this as pilot group, what we'll then do is we will then just modify all of these settings. So we'll turn everything on. So we have everything turned on. So if we start with scheduled scan, scheduled scans are self-explanatory. So do we want to run a scheduled scan on a client computer? Yes or no. We'll do a quick scan. The scan day is what we'll do at this point here is we will do a quick scan daily. We'll do that quick scan. Let's set that to be, let's say, um, 6 p.m. So we'll go for 6 and then p.m. Then what we've got, run a daily quick scan. Well, yes, we're already doing that, so we don't need to run an additional daily scan. Check for the latest definition updates before running a scan. I always think it's best to say yes. Don't really want to run a scan and then have to run another scan after we've downloaded new updates. Shall we start a scheduled scan only when the computer is idle? Yes or no, and let's specify what we mean by idle. Then we can force a scan of the selected scan type if the client computer is offline during more than two scheduled scans. So we're doing it daily. So it's offline for more than two days, we'll run the scan. In the case of our scan settings, what we can do is we can scan email and email attachments. We can definitely want to scan our USB devices. I'm not going to bother scanning network files. I'll assume that the network team is already doing that. We will scan our archive files. We won't allow users to change any of the settings. So we won't allow them to configure CPU usage. And user control will say no control. But as you can see, we can allow them limited control of what the scan will do. In the case of the default action, so anything that is severe, rather than being quarantined, I'm going to actually remove that. So we'll say OK there. Then high, I'm happy to quarantine. Medium, happy to quarantine. Low, we'll allow those through. Real-time protection, yes, we will enable real-time protection. So when a user opens a program, we'll do an on-demand scan. Monitor the file program activity on your computer, yes or no. Scan system files. We'll scan both incoming and outgoing files. We don't want to infect people, but we don't want to be infected. We'll scan all downloaded files and enable exploit protection for Internet Explorer. We will enable behavior monitoring. We will enable protection against network-based exploits. We won't allow users to change any of the settings, and we will enable protection against potentially unwanted applications at download and prior to installation. Exclusion, we won't exclude anything. Advanced at this point here, under the advanced settings, we will create a system restore point before we clean the computer. Shall we disable the client user interface? Yes. Show notifications? Yes. Delete quarantine files after, let's make that 90 days. Allow users to configure the setting for quarantine file deletion? No. Allow users to exclude files? Again, no. Allow all users to view file history or full history? Yes. Enable repass point scanning? So any changes? No. Randomized scheduled scan? No. Enable auto sample file submission? No, I'm not part of the cloud protection service. And allow users to modify auto sample file submission? Again, no, I'm not part of the cloud protection service. On my threat overrides at this point here, I could set any if I had any. We're not a member of the cloud protection service. And in the case of definition updates, what we'll do is we'll check endpoint protection every hour. Check for the endpoint protection definitions daily. Let's change that to 6 p.m. again. Force the definition update if the client is offline. Yes. Set the sources. So where will we get the updates from? Happy with all of the defaults there. Then what we've got, if config manager is used as a source of definition updates, they'll only update from alternative sources all in 72 hours in the case of the updates. And if we are using UNC paths, specify the UNC paths. As we saw here, I'm not when I went to set sources. So we'll click OK at that point there. We've now created that de uh, new policy. 
So what we'll do with that new policy now is we'll now deploy that out against our device collection and we'll do that against our endpoint protection pilot and select OK. So another type of policy you can create is a Windows Defender Firewall policy. So we'll create one of these as well. Again, that brings you into wizard. So all we'll do at this point here is we'll just call this endpoint pilot FW for firewall. Then we'll select next. Then what we'll do is we'll specify some settings. And as you can see, it's not very comprehensive, but what we can do is we can enable the Windows firewall on various profiles or policies associated with our network interface cards. Block all incoming connections, not configured, but we will block all incoming connections. And then at this point here, if we do block anything, let's tell the user about it. Select our next button, read through the summary and select next. Then what we'll do is wait for the progress to complete. And then what we'll do is select our close button. And again, we'll come in, we'll deploy that. And we'll deploy that against the collection. So we'll browse through at this point here. We'll do that for our endpoint protection pilot. And what we'll do is we'll just specify that we'll scan for compliance every day. And then we'll select OK. And now what we've done is we've now created an anti-malware policy and a Windows Defender Firewall policy. That's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.